In terms of highlights um, this year, we saw you come back into the legislature. What were the big moments for you this year, good and bad? I think uh, some of the good things that happened uh, that, you know, I think we got the government to back down on their idea of spending over a billion dollars on the Royal BC Museum, which almost nobody really understood how that made any sense. And frankly, one of the, the other things more recently, um, I was really pleased to see David Eby reverse direction on the individualized autism funding because, you know, over the past year that's really caused um, a huge amount of pressure on families uh, with children with autism. And I really, the, the good things, I've really enjoyed getting back, getting our opposition very focused, making sure that we do our job. A lot of the public doesn't realize that our job is to hold government accountable and so we have to, you know, point out the shortcomings and and some of the things the government perhaps isn't doing particularly well, where they could improve, et cetera. I think we've done a very good job of doing that as an opposition. We've focused on crime and how it's spinning out of control and how you know, David Eby's prior catch and release program with repeat offenders is not working for communities. Um, we've talked about how housing affordability is important, but not just in announcing things that government hopes to do, but pointing out that we've now got the highest housing prices in North America which isn't working, and same with healthcare. Just, you know, pointing out that we've now got one in five British Columbians that cannot access a family doctor. We've got a million people waiting to see a specialist. We've got the longest wait times in Canada when it comes to our walk-in clinic. So all of these things are not good, obviously, but I think we're doing a good job of pointing them out so that we can try and drive better results. So in terms of just this past year, we saw a, a sort of less movement from, from the government until recently when Premier David Eby came in. We've seen a lot of announcements. I am wondering from you, do you think that was orchestrated? Oh, of course it is. And look, I, I mean, that's, it's very normal. A new Premier comes in, they actually sat on a whole bunch of announcements they could have made a lot earlier, especially affordability relief for a lot of families that are really feeling the pressure. The BC Liberals, you, you promised them uh, um, name change and they voted, BC Liberal members, for that name change to BC United. When are we going to see the signage and all that? Well, we have, uh, under our constitution, we have to have an approval mechanism at a convention, so we'll do that in January. And then we have to do, you know, spend some time doing branding and, and uh, a lot of work on logo and that kind of thing. So that will take place through the spring. Um, and then I have to make a decision about when is the right time to implement that. So, uh, I, you know, although Premier Eby has said that he won't call the election, he's been quite explicit about that. I'm sorry to say that I, I can't totally trust those words. And so I have to make sure that we implement that name change at a time that is not going to put us at risk in confusing the public. The BC NDP did well in the last election by capturing some of the urban ridings, including Surrey. There is some concern that this name change with the BC Liberals to BC United is going to drive away some of the progressive Liberals within the party, and that includes people in some of those communities in the Fraser Valley. What thought have you given to that? Yeah, I just, I, I really don't think that's going to be an issue because, look, it, people know what I'm all about and uh, I am not about ideology, I'm actually just about results and outcomes. You know, at the end of the day, you look in Vancouver, you know, ABC party really didn't exist a year ago and today they, you know, have a majority of uh, control all over the city of Vancouver. I just want to make sure, without any shadow of a doubt, we are going to be a, a big tent party that's very inclusive. This year, you also removed uh, John Rustad yes. from the caucus. Why did you feel that was important? Well, because he, for whatever reason, decided um, that he was going to push out information that essentially was denying that climate change is real. And, you know, I, I don't mind if people have contrary opinions to mine. I'm, I'm used to having people that disagree with me. And I think sometimes that makes for a better debate, frankly. But the problem with John is, as I always said to him, is that this is a team sport. Do you support Pierre Polyev for prime minister? No, I don't get involved in federal politics. Once I'm in provincial politics, um, I park my, you know, my federal uh, involvement. Look, I've been a longtime federal conservative. I make no apologies about that. But the reality is I have to work with both governments. That's how we always did it while we were, you know, while I was in government. And it's the right way. I will deal with the prime minister 
and try and get the best results for British Columbians, and I will deal with Pierre Polyev as opposition leader or in the future if he's prime minister in the same way. Because at the end of the day, my responsibility is to British Columbians. It is not to be partisan about who I support at the federal level. It's about making sure I work with whoever is in government and the opposition to try and get the best possible results for British Columbians.